Hey, everybody. I'm here with Dr. Gary Stinnett. He finished the Carson Newman program in the spring of 2024 and uh, asked him to do a little Zoom call where we talk about his chapter two process because it's a big challenge. It's a big chore. So, um, so Gary, he, he did it. He did it really well. So, Gary, what'd you do? Well, um, I'll just tell you, uh, for me, uh, chapter two, I guess, was the, the probably the hardest of the chapters, uh, just for the fact that it's all the information gathering uh, and making sure that you have the, the, the correct resources, ones that are going to stand up to uh, uh, the research and the people that are reading your research. Uh, so it was it was probably the hardest. Uh, it's one of the largest chapters, of course, too, uh, with all the information that you're bringing in. Um, it, it's a process. Um, one of the things that um, I guess on the front end that I kind of struggled with was um, the amount of research. And, and for my topic, uh, for those of you all uh, that are uh, starting this process, and mine was teacher morale and job satisfaction. So there's quite a bit of information out there on that, um, on that particular topic. Uh, and you can go a lot of different ways with it. Um, and that was one of the, the big struggles for me was I had a whole lot of information that I had gathered and it was kind of trying to point that information in the right direction uh, to, to look at what, you know, what area I wanted to really focus on. And when I started out with chapter two, um, it was it was a lot and I didn't do. Uh, from an organizing standpoint, I tried to start out and organize well. I ran into some issues there um, to where I just felt like I had way too much information and not a great direction. Um, but I, sit, I sat down and I started to uh, make myself an outline. Um, and that was one of the things that really uh, helped me. And that came at Dr. Sohn's suggestion. He was, uh, he's very much a proponent of of that outline and trying to stay with that. Um, and when I went down that pathway, I still had a lot of information, even after making an outline, I just, my, my main areas, my main headings, I uh, continued to grow when I started to get too many subheadings under each one of those. Uh, so I started looking for ways to kind of cut back. Um, but after kind of, after I finished the first, um, I guess the first draft of chapter two and Dr. Sohn went back and, and uh, wrote his remarks and edit, uh, looked at that information, uh, gave me some feedback on it. It made it a lot easier for me. Uh, I changed, uh, I really went back and started like coming through everything. Um, I had substantial edits to make, so don't panic when you've got a lot of edits after your first, uh, after your first review. Uh, that's just part of the process. Uh, but like I said, I, I had some organizational I issues. Uh, I needed some I needed some more data. I had a lot of information, but my data was a little weak. I needed more more sources of data and less, I guess what you would call background information. I had a lot of background information, but I didn't need I didn't have as much data to match up with the background information. So I kind of had to, to match that up. And I really needed more empirical and peer-reviewed uh, peer reviewed resources. So those are kind of the first few things that I took out of the initial uh, review uh, from Dr. Sohn was I needed data and I needed to make sure that my resources were the proper resources. So when you, when you start looking at that, really um, start coming through. Uh, Carson Newman's library is ph phenomenal for that, but really start coming through your data because if you just get online and do a Google search, you can get lost real quick. Uh, so really use your resources well. Um, but I took chapter two and after, after Dr. Sun sent me the first edit, I really took it and I, I started over. I, I made a, a, a new outline. I didn't start my paper over, but I started my outline over. Hmm. I started coming, coming through my, uh, my different sections and, I started going, okay, this really fits here. This really doesn't fit. I didn't delete information. I just cut it and pasted it into a different document. So after I had done 
my rewrites or after I had uh, gone through and reorganized with my outline, uh, I would paste the information I wasn't using into a different document and I would just leave it over there and then I would reread. So I literally eliminated anything that didn't fit um, and just moved it out of the way. And then after making uh, that second outline, I literally read through each paragraph and I, uh, I, I removed anything that didn't belong in the paragraphs. And then I would go to the next paragraph and I would check it. I would do uh, Grammarly. I ended up, um, this is one of the important things I would say that I did is I would take each paragraph and do all of my grammatical uh, checks paragraph by paragraph before I moved on to the next one. So if you're, if you're hiring someone to read, if you're doing a reader or something like that, I, I'm not sure the process that they go through. Um, but that's what I did is I would read each paragraph and try to do all my grammatical checks before I moved on to the next one. But once I made it through my paper, like I said, I reread, I would eliminate any unnecessary information. And, or if I ran into a sentence that should have belonged in a different paragraph, I would go and put it in, uh, remove it and paste it into the other paragraph, but make sure it, it, it met, um, you know, it met the flow of the read. Uh, because one of the things that um, uh, Dr. Sohn would say is, you know, the flow is important for the reader. The reader needs to be able to understand what you're saying. So that's one of the things I try to go and And um, the whole time I was together with Dr. Sohn, he can tell you I'm, I'm, I'm very much my own worst critic. I will come through. I probably overthink way too much. But he made a simple statement and it made me laugh but it worked really well. He said to eat an elephant in chunks. And that was something that I kind of took from that is, you know, you've got this big, large thing that you're working on and it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's very important just to chunk it up and take it a little bit at a time. And that's exactly what I started doing in chapter two after I went back and made a second outline. So believe it or not, I had a regular outline uh, or what I would call a rough draft outline. And then I had more of an exact outline after, um, after I started going, I started going back through and seeing what was necessary, what was not necessary, the data that I needed, where the data needed to be, um, where the background information needed to be. And I tried to really make sure that it all was something that flowed for the reader and I was able to break it down and, and try to work as much from a grammatical standpoint as well to make sure it was easy to read. But also, you know, it's it's a scholarly article. So you want it to sound good, not just to be easy to read, but also to sound to sound like it should as a scholarly article. But that's kind of what I did. I really just after the first edit. And like I said, there were a lot of edits for chapter two. Um, I. I went back and, and really went line by line, paragraph by paragraph, and made sure everything made sense and um, uh, made that second outline to make sure that all of my subcategories met the main parts of, of that particular chapter. So, yeah, that's great. So, it sounds like, you know, at the beginning, you said something kind of interesting to me that it's like you got to have it kind of for the, for the right audience kind of thing and then that fed into what you're saying about that you had a bunch of information but maybe not enough data and so we got to get that like those empirical study results in order to kind of communicate with the people who are going to be reading it and that was that was one of the things too because i could have taken teacher morale and job satisfaction in multiple multiple different directions. I could have went at it from a special education standpoint. I really took it as, uh, and mine was for secondary, uh, secondary education. So middle school and high school, um, and what, what the teacher morale was there and what, what was working, what was not working. Uh, and, and, you know, I even thought I would have a lot of information in my paper about COVID-19 and I had a little bit but not nearly as much as I thought I would because mm -hmm. that was something after I went through the process that 
really was not something that impacted my paper as much as I thought it would. Yeah, like I said, I had a little blurb and a small amount of information about COVID, but uh, before I started writing chapter two and when I started doing the research, I figured I would have a lot of information there. And I did have a lot of information, but that necessarily did not fit in the direction that I took my paper. So don't, don't stress out too. I would say if you have information that you thought you were going to be using and you end up not using some of it, that's, that's part of the process I went through as well as, is there was a lot of different avenues that you could take and you just kind of funnel it down and having that outline kind of, kind of helps. I had some COVID information, but it really did not fit well in the other categories that I had. And that's one of the areas that I kind of just pulled out. So. You know, I remember you telling me too, that, that this was uh, the process was a lot of time. Yes. It was like uh, hours. Um, I, that's, I, that's something I kind of like to emphasize to the students. It's like, this is out. This is going to take hours. Yes. It, and it did. And I will, I will tell uh, your class there as well, or your, or your students as well. Um, I, I have a, a, a daughter in college and one in high school. And every night um, at, at nine o'clock, I would literally go into my room, which I have an office in my room there at, at my house. And I would tell them, hey, guys, I'm going to write my paper. And literally from nine o'clock every night until about 12, one o'clock, I usually worked about three or four hours a night. And I would do that three to four nights a week. So I was really putting in, you know, anywhere from about 15 to 20 hours a weekend on on my dissertation. And that was each and every week. And then on Saturdays, if I wanted to go do something, I would do it. But I would also make sure that I was putting in some hours on the weekends as well. Uh, add another four or five hours, maybe over the, the Friday and Saturday. But also tried to spend a little time with my, of course, with my girls there. But um, it's it's something to where you have to definitely be consistent with your time because it's real easy one night not to work on it. And then three days later, you haven't done anything and you really need to make sure that you organize your time just as much as you organize your paper. Um, I had uh, another colleague of mine who uh, went to Carson Newman's program as well uh, a couple of years before, and she got up and she would do hers at like five o'clock in the morning. She would like work at, uh, for a couple of hours every single morning. And then she worked more than I did on the weekends. So uh, we kind of did ours a little bit differently, but she also said time was a, a huge factor and it is, it is a time consuming process just to uh, organize everything, put it where it needs to be and, and to, to write a, uh, a scholarly article like this. But do take, take mental breaks though. I will say that too. Take a minute. Sometimes you just need to check out a little bit, check out. Uh, I know Dr. Uh, Sohn does some rock climbing. Uh, if I if I did that, I wouldn't be here. Uh, I don't think I'm shaped or built to rock climb. But um, if I could get out and go spend some time with a girl, the, with my daughters or uh, go play a little golf or something, I would take a mental break when I needed to take it because sometimes that just helps the process along too. It helps you reorganize your thoughts a little bit. So make sure you take that time for yourself as well. Yeah, your brain, your brain will keep working. That's what I say. Your brain will keep working on it while you're taking a break. So, well, that's good. And I like the thing you say about like with the paper. So that's a nice specific detail for people to pick up on. You cut out parts of the paper and put it in another document. Did you have multiple screens or, or just kind of you okay with that? Uh Believe it or not, I started out with one screen and I was doing a split screen and I went to Best Buy and purchased another screen <laughs> and worked on dual screens after that. But um, and that I, I will tell you, too, I mean, that was a, a little two hundred and fifty dollar option, but that really helped my sanity uh, being able to use two screens. Uh, and I know uh, that's uh, something that that I was able to do. You might not be able to do that. I understand it. I also wrote a lot on my laptop. Uh, if I was traveling for work, I, I took it with me too. So I always had the ability and 
I'm kind of old school. I try not to uh, uh, kill uh, many trees, but I did have to print some of the research off too because I needed to highlight stuff uh, yeah. instead of just trying to do it on my iPad. So uh, whatever type of organization works for you, I say go and go hard at it. I know a lot of people use sticky notes and labels and, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of a little bit more digital, but there's uh, some things you just uh, kind of want uh, something where you can jot some notes down real quick on some paper, but um, having that extra document over there to where I know I didn't lose my work that I had done. And when I would go back through and reread, I'd be like, oh, I had a quote or I had some information about this. And then I just pull up the other document, hit control find and start typing in some information and it pull it out. And then I could go right back to do it. And if I needed to insert that into my document, I could from, from all that previous information that I had. So and on the other side of that, too, I would say back it up, back it up, back it up. So I would always save mine on on our on the Carson Newman server, which is your your office account that you have through Carson Newman. And I also back it up on email and flash drives as well. So. Yeah, just good. in case I lost something. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, good, good stuff. We don't always think of. Uh, one of the things I had to get used to and Dr. Sun's a, a huge proponent of this, but. Uh, the review on Microsoft Office where he puts his comments. Uh, I messed up once or twice and forgot to turn that option on. So don't forget to turn that review option on because if he has sent you edits back, you need to make sure uh, that you that you see what he said because after you make those edits and you send it back to him, but you don't have that on, uh, he can't see what you did. So uh, don't forget to, to always make sure you have that editing and that review uh, on, on in your in your document there, so you can see what he did and he can see what you did to to fix those edits as you as you walk through your paper. So that was that was something I had to get used to. That was uh, uh, new for me, even though I'm kind of a tech guy. Never read it, really um, uh, done a whole lot of. Um, comments and stuff on on paperwork like that so yeah the track changes track changes yeah that's it very helpful very helpful yep. to, to go back and forth yeah. and that's even a good place where you can put your own notes on on the side there when he's asking you a question you could put well i was doing this or i was thinking about this and that way when you go back to do your edit you can see what he said and then what your thoughts were there and then you can kind of kind of make that edit make that uh, change to your document mm -hmm. yeah that's good well it's very helpful uh, thanks for sharing but, the process yeah and, and and i will just tell you again i'm kind of um i'm i'm pretty straightforward so if dr stone would ask me a question and say well hey what did you mean by this i would literally go back and read that and think okay what does it say to me and Dr. Sun's the first to read here. So what did it say to him? Because he's asked this question. So if it says that to him, then will it possibly say the same thing to the reader? That's the thing you need to understand is he's your first read. And what you thought you were trying to say may not be what the reader is actually getting from that. So really pay attention to those questions he's asking and saying, hey, is this what you meant or why did you say this and really think back through some of that? Cause that'll make the flow of your paper go uh, a lot better. So, but anyway, that's, it's kind of how I work through my chapter two. And it was, uh, like I said, it's chapter two is tough because it's a lot of background information. It's a lot of data. It's a lot of research and it's just trying to point your paper to really start to point your paper in the right direction. Yeah, good. Thank you.